Welcome to another episode of Corporate CPR, where we breathe life back into your organization, projects, and processes, giving you insights to recovery and avoiding corporate mortality events. Today, we'll be talking about the introverted leader and how they can drive a successful organization. And joining us to contribute to the conversation is Jody Lasky. Welcome, Jody. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're glad you could be here. Um, can you share a little bit about your background? Absolutely. Uh, I have been an introvert on and off for 25 years of my career, which is more of it than I want to admit. Um, I have done everything from solo service industry businesses to uh, government contracting, defense area contracting with, with tech and patents and all that fun stuff. Wow. Well, um, I'm I'm an extrovert, at least according to the test. So it should be a, a good conversation coming at it from both sides. So um, um, yeah, I would love to, uh, I guess, start, t- talk a little about, I always like to set the stage. And I know while many people um, think they know introverted versus extroversion and all of that, maybe we could just lay the foundation with a little bit of a definition and maybe even some um, common misconceptions, because I know there are a few. Absolutely. Thank you for for giving me that chance. Um, Introverts are not necessarily shy. So sometimes it's easier to start with what we're not. And, And I'm here, I'm talking to you, a total stranger. I'm not shy. Um, what introversion is, it's a combination of traits that basically come down to, we get our energy from being alone. We process information more internally than externally. By the time we verbalize something, we've usually come to a decision. Mm. Um, information actually takes a different pathway through the brain in introverts and extroverts. Mm. Uh, we have fewer dopamine receptors than extroverts. So the neurotransmitters go through our brain differently. It's a little bit slower. And that's the processing time. Hmm. We, we don't often respond quite as quickly to a, a question because the information is literally traveling through our brain differently. Hmm. I, that, I learned something there. I, um, um, so yeah, I... I, I completely, I guess, relate to the, I talk as I speak, and I probably drive a little bit of the introverts nuts on this show, because they're probably the ones who are emailing me, emailing me ahead of the time asking, do you have any questions prepared? Nope, I don't. We'll figure it out as we go. Um, Sometimes that's that's introverts. Sometimes (laughs) that's just people who aren't as confident about about speaking. (laughs) Um, But, but Sometimes when you hear someone take a pause and say, that's a great question to, to something that you're thinking is really an obvious question. You know, there's nothing great about that. It, it's the purse, the speaker giving their brain a chance to finish mm. processing, to be able to answer your question. Yeah. So um, what are some of, I guess, the biggest challenges we can start with, with um, introverts as leaders? Um, because, you know, I, I know that, um, you know, the extroverts are the ones that a lot of people think of being the gregarious out there in front, um, let's go team and, and, and that sort of, um, uh, I guess, persona, but there are a lot of successful introverted CEOs of very large companies. So what are some of the challenges that they face? And yeah. We are often seen as being less collaborative. Mm. We we make decisions so internally that we forget to bring others into the conversation because it's all happening in our heads. So learning, especially as you your company grows, as you join a larger organization, whatever that may be, learning to to verbalize some of that and get and take the feedback. It's not that we're not open to the feedback. It's that we've already gone through that analysis. So so learning to do that is the first one. Mm. The second one is hating small talk and jumping right into things. The combination of those two together means that we can look very standoffish and like we don't care about our colleagues, and the people who work for us, because we're not communicating in a way 
that they can understand who we are and what our intentions are. On, on that one, um, I'm curious if there's um, an, maybe an overlapping attribute there. And, and I get the introversion and extroversion is, is a, a spectrum. And so, you know, a person who might be an extrovert might just be slightly extroverted and therefore have some introverted characteristics. But um, when you mention that small talk piece, um, you know, uh, take it from uh, my perspective, like I can go up and start a conversation with anybody. Like that's kind of the extrovert in me. If I feel motivated, I can come up with something to be able to generate a conversation and have no fear in doing so. And, um, and I, I get that, you know, and, um, but what I don't like is I actually don't like small talk. Um, and I, and, you know, I don't, there, there's a sense of, oh, I can't be bothered. Um, and I know you talk about um, the meteor conversations, and that is a little bit of like what I am. So I know we've never talked before, so you don't necessarily know me, but um, is there, is that part of the spectrum? Or is that another characteristic that, you know, some extroverts might have this characteristics, but it based on something else? I would ask you to consider how you approach um, someone at like a PTA meeting. You'll mm. probably say, who's your, who is your child? Like what, wondering what brought them there. That's, that's the kind of small talk. Small talk changes from environment to environment. What constitutes small talk? Right. Um, so, so that's part of it. But yes, the whole extrovert introvert thing is a spectrum. It's not mm -hmm. a you are one, you are the other. Mm -hmm. It's based on, like I said, it's based on the the dopamine receptors in our brain. Yeah. And sometimes they're working at different levels. So. Mm. There's a, there's number, but there's also, and, and I'm not a neuroscientist by any stretch. I've tried to read the studies and that's where this comes from. Um, but it's, it's how much of the dopamine we can use because of the number of receptors that we have available <laughs> at any point in time. So we're all spectrumed that way. Um, some people are going to have a lot more to begin with, to make use of. So even when they're stressed, they still have access, but the more, tired, the more uh, your receptors are, are impacted. So mm, for some yeah. people who are tired, they become, they get into a group of people and, and get really energized just from being around those people. And that's, that's an extroverted trait. So that brings them back. Mm. But, but I think whether, I'm sure there are introverts who are totally fine with small talk because it's safe. Um, mm -hmm. just like there are extroverts who can do it. I suspect you can do it. It's right. not that it's, it's just that you don't enjoy it. Right. That's, yeah. That's the difference. It's the, the comfort level and, and, or, or versus ability to. And what do you say? I mean, cause so whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, what is that perception in the, in the environment then when you don't give small, you know, not in a work environment when you're not interested in small talk? Uh, you are cold and standoffish and don't care about anyone, which may be true and is just as likely to have absolutely nothing to do with what's going on. Um, leaving introversion and extroversion aside, if you have two people, one of whom has been going through a lot of stuff and they're just not vocalizing it because it's the workplace. So I'm not going to talk about it, but they're in their head and they're worried about other things. They may not remember to, to ask the small talkish question <laughs> that the other person is, is expecting right. or comment on the conversation they had before that the first, that the person is expecting. And that's, not related to introversion and extroversion. It's that we don't know what's going on in everyone else's head at all times. Mm -hmm. So, so assume the person you're interacting with is doing the best they can in any given interaction and go from there. It's when you have patterns of it, that it becomes problematic, especially for a leader. Yeah. I mean, I I've mentioned on this show before that, you know, I, I had a, an employee who, um, 
you know, back at working in retail and I, I went up to him and was like, Hey, can you go take care of this? And, and, you know, that was my first interaction with him of the day. And he came back and, and later um, very bravely told me that, Hey, you know, you often come up to me and ask me to do something and you never find out what I'm already got on my plate and what I'm doing. And that was really eye opening for me. Um, have you seen that? Ma- like, that's just one example. Have you seen it manifested in other ways and, and what it does to that employee or leader relationship, employee leader relationship? Uh, I'll give an example for myself recently. Uh, I was working on a consulting project with another colleague who I have not worked with before. And I was getting very frustrated by her output. I know she's been, she's, she's actually with the company that, that I was consulting for and she's been there a long time and she's got a solid reputation. And I was looking at her output going, I don't understand. I don't understand where this reputation comes from. And I said something to my contact with the the company in terms of, you know, this is a really large deal that you're going to lose because of, of the lack of performance on this person's part. And I just assumed it was, you know, everyone loved her because she is a very sweet person. And so they were giving her the benefit of the doubt and, and always just sort of helped her along. And, My contact's answer was, okay, then there's something wrong because that's not her quality of work. And Mm. I just didn't, I went to all these other things that it was Mm. before I'm the only one who's actually working with her now to see the change. And I don't know what to change. Right. So, but I went to, she just must not be as good as, as I was led to believe. Instead of there's, there is probably something going on with her and let's, mm-hmm. you know, now they can go talk to her, try to help her see, see if she just needs a little bit of downtime, see if there's something going on and actually try to help what's going, whatever it might be. Um, maybe we can talk about before we talk about maybe there's, I know there's other challenges that introverts face in the workplace and we can come back to that. But while we're talking about this one in particular, um, what are some of the techniques that you've seen that can help like with this small talk type of that? Because that's really about creating connection because connection builds trust. Um, and, and so how, if, if you're not into small talk and things like that, what are some techniques that you can use um, to make people still feel valued and build that trust. One of them is to find yourself the extrovert. The Mm -hmm. extrovert will feed you the information, remind you of what to say to whom and when, um, especially the higher you up are in the organization, the more you need to, to connect and just keeping all those threads is a lot anyway. So whether it's your assistant whether it's someone else in your close circle, find yourself the extrovert to, to feed it to you. And the feeding can be verbal. It can be handwritten notes. It can be text messages. You know, don't forget to ask about whatever. And the other is to use your own tools. After you've talked with an employee and you find out, you know, John's mother is sick. You know, Justin's son is in in the, a little league tournament whatever it is just jot down a quick note with a reminder to yourself like use the tools i have had people say isn't that cheating no no people don't care why you remembered to ask they remember that right. they care that you asked yeah i mean i um one of my techniques was i used to create a to-do list um, and put people on my to-do list, <laughs> or it might say, go talk to five people without any sort of, um, like objective, like, or like uh, ulterior motive is the wrong word, but like, as in like, don't go talk to anybody needing something like that, that I need to go need something from them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, to-do list was, was one of mine that I used. See, yep. That's a great way of doing it. It's use the tools around you and embrace that you have to. And it also then automates some of it. Like it Mm. takes it out of your brain as one more thing 
to worry about and one more thing to think about while you're doing everything else that your job has to do. Because people leadership is to me the most important part of a company because your people are the ones who are going to actually do all the work. Mm. And for an introvert, that can be really, really hard. So make it easier. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, let's keep going with the list. What are some of the other challenges that uh, introverts face as leaders? Part of it is lack of role models. Mm. You know, you've got Steve Jobs, you've got Mark Zuckerberg, um, and a few other really geeky types like that that sort of all look very much the same. Mm. So, what does it look like to lead as a Gen Z female introverted, uh, you know, the, these, we don't have templates for those things. So we're, we're always trying to make it up as we go along. A lot of the books on leadership are very much written with an assumption of extroversion because most people in the U S are extrovert. And especially once you get into the leadership area, there are a lot more extroverts out there being extroverts. Um, and what I, I'm sorry, I, not to be a contrarian or anything, but what backs that up? Because, you know, I know there's a lot of people who can appear extroverted, kind of like you were alluding to at the beginning. So how do we know that there's, that they're actually genuinely more extroverts in leadership or in the U S for that matter? So, so I actually love that question because that is what the data says. And I think the data is wrong. And here's why I think the data is wrong. 50 years ago, when they did studies, it was 50-50, extroverts, introverts. As media has become more and more prevalent and taken over our lives more and more, it's shifted to be more like 75-25 versus the 50-50. And I think part of that is because of media representation of when, if you watched Friends, I'm dating myself once again, if you watched Friends, no one wanted to be Ross, who was the introvert on the show. Mm. You wanted to be anyone else on the show well not because he's introvert but just because he says the stupidest things <laughs> because he's socially awkward which yeah. is which is all part i of wouldn't want to be phoebe though either i don't know <laughs> those are the two two extreme ends right. Of, right? Right. um i would love to see data now post covid because mm -hmm. i think a lot more people not necessarily during COVID because even introverts were going, okay, I like being alone, but this is a, too much alone time even mm. for me. Mm. But the, the re-emergence post COVID, a lot more people going, you know, I'm really tired from being around people. Ha ha, you, mm. you were more introverted than you thought. And the studies, the 50-50 and then 75-25, assumed a binary of you are either introverted or extroverted All right versus it is truly a spectrum and it depends on other things going on in your life and other thing um elements of the situation where are you actually what are you doing okay well you mentioned um sorry so we kind of derail you mentioned the lack of role models um, um, for introverts as leaders. And so what are some of the things that you're seeing, I guess, that supports, um, or, or how do leaders get around, around that? I think the biggest one is to take what works for you from the, the books out there, from the videos out there, wherever the, the keynotes out there, take what works for you and put aside the stuff that doesn't. I work with a lot of, lot of startup founders who, you know, see the hustle, 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 and I've got to be out doing all these things and meeting all these people and then building my company. And that doesn't work for an introvert, right? Mm. So, so take the stuff, protect your energy, balance what you need with what the company needs, and that will make you a better, more effective leader anyway. So where do you, um, what happens to an introvert then who's becoming a leader, maybe finds themselves in a leadership position um, and they try to emulate an extrovert? They're going to burn out really quickly. 
you're going to be tired. You're going to be cranky. <laughs> and no one around you is going to like you very much, to include your family. Um, mm. my, my father was actually a lot like that. He was the, the generation where we didn't talk about things like introversion and extroversion. And mm -hmm. he was a courtroom lawyer. Mm. He was on all day, every day talking and hustling and doing all that and he would come home and lay on the bed for three hours watch tv and not be able to interact with any of us because he gave it all that was every ounce of his his extroverted energy went out to his job and he had nothing left for his family mm. And so I guess one of the things that, uh, so uh, you, you remind me, my, my father is also an extrovert and, you know, I think, or sorry, introvert. And I think one of the, the thing goes back to what you were saying before he comes across as cold or calculated to other people, right? Like I've never viewed him that way. Um, but you know, he was a lawyer and, um, and so when people, your boyfriend, whatever meets him very intimidated by my father. Cause he's quiet. He doesn't do small talk. He's the worst small talk person that I know. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and, and, and then, it, you know, and so intelligent and won't talk. So that, you know, comes across as very much looking down on somebody and then probably doesn't smile a lot until you get to know him. So, you know, what are, what are some of those things then that, uh, Cause that's, you know, those first impressions are hard, right? Like around people being willing then to come up and speak to you and, um, and, and be willing to open up. Uh, it, it's probably hard to get past some of that. So what are some of the steps that people, I mean, can take from, from first interaction, but then repeated, you know, interactions to maybe start breaking down that perception. I'm a big believer in having an opening question that you are comfortable with as an introvert that will skip some of the small talk without being intrusive mm -hmm. without, because if you skip the small talk, you can be seen as not having or respecting personal boundaries. So I always go with, why are you excited to be here? Mm -hmm. Or what excites you about X and keep it into the, the area that you are working on or in, um, you know, why are you excited to work for this company or, or this new project that I'm assigning you? What are you excited about? And, and go for the excitement part before the nerves, right? Mm -hmm. And, and build that trust and get people talking about the positive sides of it because that makes them happy. Also, even extroverts, especially extroverts, maybe love talking about the, the part of a project that they're excited about. And then you can, go into some of the, okay, what are you worried about? How can I help you? And also remember that as a leader, your job, if you want to be an effective leader versus a manager, there is that servant leadership component. So how can I help you do that? And that then allows the person you're speaking to to actually say what they're afraid of or what their concerns are without really jumping into the negative and you show I am here to help you like tell me how I can help you what I mean I guess the step one of all of that to like even come up with like your opening question and stuff is to realize you have a problem well not that introversion is a problem but you have a perception problem right that that you know your behavior maybe maybe can lead to mis misperception about who you really are so how do people become even aware that this could be a perception? Um, ask, ask people around you what your reputation is. Hmm. You know, pay attention. No one likes 360 degree reviews. No hmm. one likes hearing the negative. But if it's, if something is coming up over and over again, pay attention. Look at your own interactions. We know, we don't like to admit it. But we know when we walk away from an interaction and we've come across a little too gruff mm. or, oh, I meant to ask that question. So part of it is, is paying attention and being aware, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, be aware of your interactions and be present for them. 
and you will start noticing patterns and that will help you start to, if you need to fix them, fix them or not. Mm -hmm. Because remember a good portion of your employees are going to be introverts also. So you can also ask people, Hey, you know, I, I'm an introvert. I kind of tend to forget the small talk. I apologize if I have ever made you feel unseen. I am working on it. You know, that that goes a long way. And you're going to get a, plenty of people who answer back with, don't worry about it. I'm good. I've, I'm the same way. Tell me what you want to mm. tell me. And, and then we can go our separate ways and, and it's all good. So, so that then shows that you are open to adjusting for each person and not assuming everyone around you is an extrovert who wants to do the small talk thing. Mm -hmm. Um, what are, uh, you know, I, I assume though, as well, um, what are some advantage? Well, actually, before we get to that, one other challenge that I guess, uh, introverts have, and I'm just curious what, what you might do to help, um, um, uh, mitigate you know any any sort of negative uh issue from it is is that you mentioned how you know et introverts like to process information and digest it and um which sometimes can be bad in a, obviously a room full of extroverts who process it really quick you know like to process while they talk um and that sort of thing so meetings right getting ideas across can be um uh challenging sometimes because of, of extroverts who won't shut up. So um, what are some of the tools that you give introverts to, to help with that processing? Especially for a leader, um, it leaders have more opportunity to control the meeting and control the space. Mm. So part of it is saying, I need a second. I'm thinking about what you just said. When when someone continues to to talk because they're nervous and they're trying to fill the the silence, or someone else jumps in with, it's okay to say, I'm still processing that. Just give me a second. Mm -hmm. And you can also do it by paying attention to the other people in the meeting and seeing if you've just said something. Does someone else need that moment? Silence is not bad. Extroverts like to fill it. We understand <laughs> that. But reminding the extroverts that that a moment of silence, not to, but 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 like taking that pause, taking that breath allows everyone to get up to speed and on the same page and have a better, more effective conversation instead of the monologues that sometimes happen. What is your um recommendations, I guess, for, I mean, I've, I mean, I've heard a lot, but what are your recommendations for extroverts then? It's the same as for introverts, right? It's pay attention to what the people around you need. Remember that you're a servant leader. Mm -hmm. Just as introverts are sometimes going to have to embrace the uncomfortable and do some small talk, extroverts sometimes are going to have to embrace the uncomfortable and accept some silence. Um, well, then let me ask my other question that I, where I was headed was, um, yeah. what about the advantages of being an introverted leader where, you know, where, where does that play in, you know? Yeah. We do tend to not react as quickly. We tend to take the time to process and have the, have just give it more time and space to to let things work themselves out. Um, we are very aware of micro aspects. Um, introverts tend to read body language a lot. We look at all of the other things going on in the room. Mm. So we, we take in a lot more information and that's maybe part of the, the processing going on. So we're looking at a lot more aspects of the total problem. So we come up with very different answers. Our answers may not be any more right than the, the extroverts, but it gives us, when you, especially when we work together, it gives us that many more options to work from. All right. What about it from a day-to-day -day interaction um, and like kind of the daily leadership? 
uh, we don't expect people to communicate outside of work hours as much. Hmm. You know, we are more protective of our non-working time. The problem comes in when our non-working time doesn't necessarily overlap with our employees' non-working time, so they're still getting. But introverts, because we need to the time to recharge, if we are respecting our bodies and our needs properly, we're not going to be communicating 24-7 and sending the three in the morning emails. Um, and we're certainly not expecting responses so much at that hour. Hmm. Um, well, what other questions have I maybe not asked about introversion that might be, you know, a good, good thing to highlight for our audience? I think you, I think you've done well covering. Um, <laughs> I would say the, the only other thing I would mention is, uh, lack of dopamine and not, not processing information the way extroverts do. That's true of a lot of neuroatypical people, neurodiverse people. And so the skills of leading someone who is introverted mm. would be similar to the skills of leading someone who is neurodiverse. So that paying attention and having the conversation about what they need and, and how they communicate will help with a much larger population when you start mm. adding in, in those types of elements. Oh, yeah. Um, is there is there anything else? I guess. Yeah, that's a. I didn't even think about that. Something that a uh, um, that int like extrovert needs to know when maybe leading an introvert um, and how to be able to um, help them thrive. Yeah, it's it's asking the questions. Mm -hmm. It's hey, how can I serve you better? And if the answer is you know, I'm good. I'll come. Don't micromanage me. I'll come to you when I have a question, then respect that, which is the hardest thing. Forget introvert or extrovert, the micromanager versus, versus not versus mm. the oversight. If you don't have that right mix, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter. So it's all asking the people who work for you, how you can lead them most effectively. And if they don't know, it's helping them figure it out. Well, excellent. Well, I guess on that note, I'll ask what three things you want to um, leave top of mind for folks. Sure. First is introversion is not shyness. <laughs> so don't look at the shy person and assume they're, they're introverted. And don't look at everyone who is speaking and assume they're, they must be an extrovert. Mm. Um, use the tools around you. Use the people around you to remember the things that you need to follow up on, to remember to interact with the people, with your people, add them to your to-do list with <laughs> a, you know, five people that, that I don't have to task with something today. That's what I need to do. I love that. Love that idea. Um, and the last thing is meet people where they are. As leaders, we need to adjust our style, not expect our subordinates to adjust theirs. Mm, yeah, I, that's excellent. A lot of um, emo uh, emotional self-awareness. <laughs> um, well, how can, um, Jody? I really appreciate your time today. How can folks get um, in contact with you? Yep. Introvertfounder.com is my website. Um, and I talk about, I have a, a goal setting prog pro uh, process up on my website for anyone who doesn't really know where they're going or where they're building to. I am a big believer in if you don't know where you're going, you don't know if you're on the right track. Yeah. So set your course. And I, I start with dreams, not like, like what is your, where do you want to be for getting like the work specific things? Five years, you know, way out in the future. Five years always seems way out in the future. And then it goes by like that. But, but download the process, see what you think about it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for being a guest on our show today. Thank you. It's great chatting with you. Yeah. And to our audience until next time, keep your organizations healthy.